Hi, I'm Darren Hirons and welcome to this video tutorial which is part of a series on onboarding Windows 10 devices using factory provisioning. As you can see I've got a Workspace UEM console and I have currently no Windows 10 devices enrolled into it. I also have an on-premises domain controller. As you can see there's already one machine joined to this domain. This is not the machine that I'm going to use in the demo today and you'll see an additional machine join later in the demo. Here I have a brand new Windows 10 machine which has been booted into audit mode. So the first thing we need to do is configure the factory provisioning tool. To do this, go into the UEM console and go to lifecycle staging and windows. In here you'll see I've already created some examples but you could create a new one by clicking the new button. In this example we're going to edit the one that's already created for an on-prem AD join. As you can see I have to give it a name and a description. I select factory provisioning and I click next and in here I can select various options including the type of domain join I want to do, in this case on premises. I can select various bits of configuration around the out of the box experience for the end user such as disabling some of the um, EULA pages etc, setting the language. I can choose, importantly, which domain I want to join and provide some credentials for that domain join. I can also choose which OU in the Active Directory this machine will land into. I can also do other things like disable uh, and remove the consumer apps like Candy Crush and I can change the license key um, in here as well. I can choose to create local users if I want to and I can set the local administrator password. I can do additional things like disabling the user access um, control and I can run additional scripts if I need to. And finally this bottom section is where we configure the enrollment details. So this is where the device is going to enroll and the credentials it's going to use. The next step is applications. We can choose to enable or disable this but we can essentially choose which applications we want to install as part of the out of the box experience. In this example I'm just going to choose Chrome and I'm going to click next. I'll get a summary screen next and I can choose to save and export this. Now should I choose to save and export this you'll see that after a few minutes I will be able to download two files. It's a PPKG and an XML file. The PPKG contains the applications that have been selected and the unattend XML contains all the out of the box experience settings. What I've done is I've copied the PPKG and the unattend XML to the desktop of the VM and I've also downloaded and copied across the factory provisioning tool which is available from the VMware website. If I run the factory provisioning tool you'll see it's, it's a fairly simple tool, it gives me a couple of options, I can select the location for the PPKG and the unattend XML. So now we can choose the behaviour when the process is finished, do we want it to shut down or do we want it to restart. In this case we're going to restart it and we're going to apply the full process. On the right hand side you'll see the status pane has appeared and this will show you the progress as we move through the uh, factory provisioning process. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to verify and install the contents of the PPKG. So this is any applications that you chose during the factory provisioning configuration. So in this case it's going to install Chrome into the desktop. The next thing it's going to do is process the unattend XML file and then finally it's going to run sysprep to generalise the image before it reboots.
Now the configuration has been applied, the machine is going to reboot. Please ignore any changes to the screen resolution as you can see now. This is just a consequence of it running inside a virtual machine. So as you can see the out of the box experience has started and remember this particular enrollment is going to um, join the Active Directory on premises domain. It's also going to enroll into Workspace One UEM. And if you remember it's going to enroll as a staging user. The idea here is that once the machine is enrolled and joined to the domain we can shut it down and give it to an end user and then the first time that end user signs in the device in Workspace One will be assigned to the real user. So we'll see that in the console shortly. So the out of the box experience has completed. We now have an, an enrolled and a domain join Windows 10 desktop. We can confirm it's joined the domain by looking inside the domain controller. We'll just log into that. If you remember there was already one machine in the domain, we should now be able to refresh and see the second machine. And just to confirm that is indeed our machine, we're just gonna open system manager in the desktop and confirm the Windows 10 desktop name.
And as you can see, those machine names match. So it is indeed our machine that's joined to the on-premises Active Directory. From a Workspace ONE UEM point of view, we can also refresh the devices list view, and we can also see that the device is already enrolled into Workspace ONE. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, you'll see that it's enrolled under the staging user account. And as I said before, we can now shut the machine down and give it to an end user and the machine will be registered against their name when they log in successfully. Okay, so let's simulate that. Let's log this machine out. Let's sign it out as the staging user. And let's sign it in as a real user. So we'll sign back in as my test user and at this point Workspace ONE will reassign the device from the staging user to the real user that's logged in. As this is the first time this user signed into this machine it will take a few minutes to create a profile for the end user. So now the machine signed in as the real user, we can jump back to the Workspace ONE UEM console and refresh and you should be able to see here that the user has immediately updated to the real user. You'll notice that the staging user is still assigned as part of the machine name. This may take a few minutes to update in the console but it will automatically update and match the user's name after a few minutes. At this point we can see that some of the profiles are still in the process of being pushed down. The configuration of the machine is not complete yet. So we've waited a couple of minutes, we go back and refresh the machine again and hopefully we should see that all the profiles and all the applications have finished being pushed to the machine now. And we can confirm that by looking inside the device record and we can see that all the profiles have now successfully been pushed to the device. So let's go ahead as the end user and let's try launching the Intelligent Hub. As part of the configuration of the Intelligent Hub, there are a couple of options which can be displayed to end users during launch. One of them, as you'll see here, is, is around the user experience, and the other one is around the uh, privacy disclaimer. Both of these options can be enabled or disabled in the Workspace ONE UEM console. So as you can see the application has launched, the Intelligent Hub's authenticated using a certificate which was pushed down as part of the payload and it's launched the default tab which is the home tab and which can be pointed at any internal or external web page. The next tab is the application tab which contains the app catalogue and users can come in here and launch any of the applications they require. End users can also perform self-service activities in here as well. They can actually click on the Windows Apps category and they can actually install their own applications if you choose to let them. We also have the People Search functionality in here which allows you to search for a person within the directory and it'll pull back all their information. And finally we have the Notifications tab which allows you as an administrator to push out notifications to any um, device with the Intelligent Hub installed. Use factory provisioning to deploy a machine which is enrolled into Workspace ONE and a member of the local Active Directory domain. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look out for more in the same series. Thank you.